Hi, I'm John, and this is Bogdan. Join us on our journey as we figure out how to earn a living as artists, introduce you to those we meet, and share what we learn along the way. Hi guys, and welcome to a new edition of Art Life with John and Bogdan from here, from South Padre Island. So we're on day five of our holiday. We've been here at South Padre Island uh, now for several days and it's our last morning before we go home. And we thought we'd shoot a little bit on the beach. And um, have a, a nice goodbye, basically. But uh, we'll show you everything in a, in a minute, what we've done here and what are we up to do um, in the next week. And if you, see, if you could uh, like and subscribe, uh, hit that notification bell. It really does help our channel if you do. So we've been here five days now, right? Today is the fifth day, yeah. I haven't got a tan in years. I haven't been to a beach and to a sun just to, to relax. I, I can't remember when it was last time. I've got my farmer tan, so uh, <laughs> just my neck and arms. It was very relaxing, guys. Uh, I think we love uh, South Padre Island. Mm -hmm. We discovered, uh, actually we discovered a um, a wild sort of beach at the end of this island uh, when I truly enjoyed. Yeah, we were able to get out and, and there, there are people here but it's not crowded at all and that has something to do with it being uh, the end of October. So if you're up north shivering in the cold, ha ha. I apparently don't understand the meaning of the word holiday. I still want to work. Uh, I want to be doing a lot to, uh, to get ready for our next month and all the different things we're doing with the art business. And uh, Bogdan's off enjoying the, the water and the swimming and uh, enjoying walking on the beach. And I told him I would stop, I would stay and watch the things. And so as soon as he left, I started uh, working. But I will get the hang of holiday, I promise. What I wanted to talk about today is um, a phenomenon that happened to us this, this week, uh, right before we left for holiday and while we were on our trip. Uh, all of a sudden, YouTube started doing some very, very strange things. We started the YouTube channel, my channel, that is separate from the art business, just the John Bishop Fine Art stuff. Uh, what, in January, less than a year ago. And so it's growing slowly. It's only got 63 subscribers and we're putting out tons and tons of content. But we've just been watching that number slowly grow and we haven't even hit 100 yet. 
and it is it can be so discouraging because it's taking so long we think that we have good content we think that uh, what we're offering is not only beneficial but hopefully entertaining uh, and interesting for people and we're certainly getting that kind of feedback from the from the few people who are uh, engaging but I, I just think it takes time well the Tuesday I guess it was I went to bed and I had 63 followers and we had just put out a new vlog episode and so generally on one of our blog episodes we will bring in maybe 20 30 views uh, uh, and that's all we get uh, and again makes me wonder gosh why are we doing all this work when we're getting so few few views uh, but I know that that's part of the process right People have told me that, I've, I've done research, and I know that it takes a good long time to get established. So I'm happy to do the hard grunt work and to wait, basically. And so um, Tuesday night, I went to bed, I had 63 followers. I launched the new uh, blog episode. Uh, and so then the next morning, I like to go in and check and see how it's doing. Uh, it, it's you know, have I gotten seven? Have I gotten eight? Uh, you know, how many people have interacted? Well, by the time I woke up the next morning, uh, I had probably seven, eight hundred hits, uh, views of the episode that I had released the night before. And I thought, what the heck? A and I looked and the uh, subscriber rate had gone from 63 to well over a hundred uh, and so we said okay there's something going on uh, who are the people who are subscribing and and viewing this and I saw lots of names uh, foreign names uh, lots of folks from India from, looked like from the Middle East and from the from the Orient and I checked out a couple of their website uh, their uh, postings and they had no content on their web on their uh, YouTube channels and I thought that's odd how would they have found me and then I found that uh, uh, those that did have some content it was in Hindi or it was in another language or are totally unrelated to our content and I couldn't understand the link what would have prompted them to follow our channel and to watch our video well it became pretty apparent to me that something was up. Uh, it wasn't us, but somebody had hacked or we couldn't understand if this was a good thing or a bad thing because the numbers kept rising. And in fact, by the end of the process, uh, the next day, we had well over, I think it was 990 uh, subscribers uh, wait, about to hit that magical 1,000. Uh, I know you don't get anything for 1,000, but it's, it's a big number for me. And, uh, uh, and, and the hit rate, the view rate for that one particular video was 1.2, almost 1.3 thousand views. Uh, we were cautiously giddy, uh, thinking, okay, is this hurting us? Is, uh, is this something bad happening? Is this something good happening? And what I realized, I couldn't see any bad side to what was happening. Uh, other than that it was not true uh, and that doesn't doesn't make my numbers very uh, representative but I noticed that my general watch time for a video because these my videos are generally about 20 30 minutes long is about three minutes average which I understand is pretty good uh, though you kind of want people to watch the whole thing and uh, when they started flooding my channel, most of these views were for a few seconds uh, and then they would stop. And so it actually brought down my average view time substantially. And I thought, okay, that could truly hurt my channel if it were big enough to be affected by that. So I thought, okay, that's a bad thing. And then in the next day, it seems like YouTube caught on and and it, it dropped from 900 to about 200, and uh, the uh, uh, and then it would go back up. It was it was still happening, 
And as of yesterday, uh, I, I checked, oh, biting flies, that's lovely, sorry. Um, as, I, as of yesterday, I checked and the, uh, and I was back down to 63 viewers, uh, subscribers. So that's not great news. Um, but it, it's been an interesting ride because it, it does signify that, you know, as much as, as important as it is to be a part of YouTube and to, uh, to use that great resource to reach so many people around the world, uh, at the end of the day, it's not something I can control. Uh, YouTube is not is not my marketing. It's someone else's marketing. It's another platform. If something goes wrong with YouTube, I am hopeless and powerless to do anything about it. And so I just I wanted to kind of touch on that and 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 look at how vulnerable are we in the face of all this change and in and to all of these platforms that we simply don't control. And I know we talked about it uh, in the last episode, but it occurs to me that with all of the kind of scandal and, and attention that Facebook seems to be getting lately, with uh, issues with its algorithms and, and issues with uh, the impact it has on people's lives, particularly young people, and the fact that they seem to know that they were impacting people's lives and didn't really do much about it. And then there are all the political ramifications of, of uh, fake news and, and amplifying hate speech and all these really kind of serious accusations around Facebook. And yet Facebook is where we do a lot of our marketing. And, and with the YouTube Facebook and Instagram, and I know Facebook and Instagram are run by the same people, uh, it makes it a little nerve-wracking to think that most of our marketing is on the platforms that are somewhat challenged right now. Uh, so that's, that's just a consideration I've had lately and thought that uh, I don't know what to do about it yet, but I think it, it deserves quite a bit of attention for our small business and how it will affect how we go forward and, and, and the quicksand that we're standing on. Uh, another thing that happened last week was that uh, we take all of our movies, all of our content, all of our photographs, and, and we put them on uh, into a hard drive, uh, and that hard drive crashed. And we do backups, but we haven't been as good about doing backups since COVID. Uh, and so that uh, all went away. And it's uh, going to take about $7,000 for us to regain that. So we're talking to the insurance company now, but uh, we are truly vulnerable. Uh, as a small business, we can't absorb what a larger business can absorb. So that's what's been going on. And uh, I think I'll, I'll change formats now because I'm getting sunburned and fly bitten. Talk to you soon. But um, listen, it's worth coming here. It's not that expensive, and um, it, it, it's good. It's the beach is great, the water is great, and uh, the whole atmosphere it's very relaxing. And we really needed that. I mean, we're about to embark on a really, really busy month. 
November is going to be crazy for us. We've got to get ready to go for Fane in Mexico City, which sounds like a holiday, but will really be a lot of work. Uh, plus, we've got uh, my big exhibition has to go underway at uh, 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 Silver Street Studios. I'm the head of the exhibition committee, and so that whole group has to be working a lot this month to get that ready. Plus all the other things that we have to do for the business and then closing up toward the end of the year, all that end of the year stuff has to happen as well. And you forgot to mention that next week, um, I will be in Fort Hood with uh, the right. Houston Inner Loop Photography Club. This is a group of photographers that go uh, every year to Fort Hood to the military base to photograph uh, military families and um, not only the yeah military families yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah. And um, this is kind of our Christmas gift to them. It's a, uh, a totally uh, free of charge uh, service and uh, we had a lot of fun doing it. And um, there's a lot. I mean, you'll shoot like four or five hundred families, right? Yeah, no, not just myself, but everybody else in there. How right. many? I can't remember how many photographers. I think there are 40. This time. Well, 40 well, it's always 40. We start with 40, but on yeah. the way everybody gets sick or this is a uh, it's not a young group of photographers. So everybody has problem at the end of the day. And all of them aren't shooting. Some of them are processing photos. It, it's a whole team effort. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's, a, it's a great uh, production uh, um, experience in a way. But I'm looking forward to that. It's going to be a great time. Two days, three days, I, I think I'll stay. Three days, yeah. And um, yeah, it's going to be super busy, but super fun. So this has been very, very refreshing for us. I mean, emotionally to be able to relax a little bit uh, and to not think about work too much. But it also, I mean, it helps us as a couple. We get closer together, spend more quality time. And when you go away, I mean, by the second, third day, I'm ready to go home. Yes, I'm ready. I miss my cat now. I, I, I miss, you know, this has been lovely, but it's, it's not real life. And uh, I'm ready to go back and get started again. Yeah. Well, guys, hope you enjoy our um, experience. <laughs> if I can, I say that. Sure. And uh, hope you enjoy the images that uh, we share with you here from South Padre Island. And um, we'll see you soon with more uh, news, uh, more stories, and more um, artwork. You bet. Have a great week. Find some way to get out and and uh, have your own mini vacation. We'll see you next time. Bye, guys. Bye.